Hey everybody, it's uh, John McDonough from Cisco's DevNet and I wanted to take a few minutes today to go over some code that we have in Code Exchange. It is uh, Tetration Playbooks for Ansible and there's a little bit of setup and a couple different ways you can utilize these playbooks with some environments that we have and so I just wanted to show you how that all sort of comes together. All right. So first things first, DevNet, developer.cisco.com and then Code Exchange. If we go into the Discover menu and go to DevNet Exchange, we can either see Code Exchange or Ecosystem Exchange. I have it up here in another tab. And under Code Exchange, we have various repositories for different technologies. And if you want to find a specific technology in Code Exchange, just put in a keyword for that technology. And in this case, I want to find Tetration. So put that in there. And the one that we're going to look at today, the, the repository is Tetration Ansible Playbooks. And just clicking on that, what we'll see is the README from the GitHub repository. And so you can see the README here, and it goes over the resources and the scenarios and some of the dependencies. And if you want to actually go to the GitHub repository, you can click on View on GitHub and see the code as it is there. Now this code is public and you can just download it and use it in your environment. What we recommend in the um, code exchange in the readme is the Cisco Tetration Platform 3.1 v1 dcloud demo. And there's actually two versions of this demo. If we go to Cisco dcloud, now almost anybody can use dcloud. You just need a cisco.com ID. And the ID I'm using today is just a an ID that I registered associated with a, a personal email account, not even my work email account. So if you think that I'm using something here that I have an advantage for because I, I work for Cisco, that's not the case. Anybody can use um, a good number of the resources that we have in dcloud as well as the um, DevNet sandboxes. In this case, we're going to use dcloud for titration. Now, if I wanted to find a, a dcloud environment for titration, I can just, like I did in Code, code Exchange, type in titration. And it brings back a couple of environments. Now this one, um, and, they're, and they're very similar. In fact, they're almost exact, exactly identical. One of them you would schedule, and you could have a set number of hours for that, for that resource. And you can go through a schedule process, and I'm, I'm not gonna show that today, but uh, you can go through the schedule process, pick a number of hours. And each dcloud environment has, uh, it could have different you know, uh, restrictions. Some could be you know, available for a couple of hours, some could be available for several days. So it really depends on the one that you're utilizing. We're going to use the one that says view next on the button, on the green button. And the reason we're using that one is because it's instant on. When I click that, it's going to take my dcloud login information and create an instance for me or a, um, a window of opportunity, if you will, into a running Tetration environment. And in this case, when I click it, what will happen is it'll go and provision a space for me. And it will give me two hours. now. In this current environment, I have uh, one hour, 11 minutes, and several seconds left. Once you get to this screen, just click here on the button, the here button, and you'll sign into Tetration. Now, the guide in the dcloud demonstration, let me just click back to that for a second. If I click on the actual title in the dcloud demonstration, I'll see the information about the demonstration or the environment, if you will, and then there's resources. Now, the resource documentation has login information. So if I go back to Tetration, the login information for this is mslab at dcloud.cisco.com. And the password is in the documentation. It's capital C, the number one, SC012345, and exclamation point. And I'll go ahead and sign in. So, so far I've just logged into dcloud and clicked view on that instant on demo, and now I'm logged into Tetration and I have this welcome screen or these, uh, these charts in front of me for Tetration. For the code exchange, we're going to download some code from, um, from GitHub under, that's under the Cisco DevNet org. If I go ahead and back to the code exchange and I click on view on GitHub, you'll see this uh, organization that it's under. It's Cisco DevNet Tetration Ansible Playbooks and I could clone or download the repo. Now I'm going to go ahead and clone it and bring it into my environment and um, I'm using VS Code for that. 
So I have VS Code open and I have a directory called DevNet and I'm going to go ahead and clone into this directory the Tetration Ansible Playbooks repository that's under the Cisco DevNet user ID on or organization on GitHub. So here we are, I have the code downloaded and you can see I have Tetration Ansible Playbooks. I'm going to go ahead and change into that directory. And there's a number of uh, files here. There's ansible.cfg, host vars, hosts, output requirements, etc. What I really want to do at this point is create an environment that's just for this um, repo that I downloaded. And I'm going to create a virtual environment. It's in Python 3. And the um, these notes are on the readme with the repository. But I'll just do Python 3 dash m v e n v. And I'm going to call my virtual environment venv. It's pretty standard, that's what you'll see out there. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And now, if I do a listing again, you'll see that I have a virtual environment directory called venv, along with all the other files that I had there. When you use a virtual environment, you have to activate it. And so we're going to say dot, or that's the alias for s-o-u-r-c-e, source, venv the dot or the word source will work bin activate now this creates our virtual environment for us or excuse me this activates our virtual environment for us so when I type Python the version of Python that's getting used is the version that was used to create it or the version that was specified when you were creating the virtual environment in this case 3.7.4 quit out of that interactive interpreter and I have some requirements that I need in fact, the repository has the requirements file built into it, and those requirements are Ansible version 2.8, greater than or equal to 2.8, but less than 2.9. Uh, JMEs S JME path 0.9.4, and the TetPy client, that is the Tetration Python client. And the way to go ahead and uh, install those requirements are pip install dash r and the name of the file. So pip will go ahead and install Ansible, the um, JM, JMES path, and then uh, the TetPy client, and all the things that are requirements for those to be utilized. So once that's installed, we can go ahead and, uh, and utilize Ansible and the uh, playbooks that are part of the, um, the repository. But to connect to uh, the, the Tetration environment that we have available to us, we actually have to go ahead and uh, create some keys, create some uh, Python keys, or excuse me, create some Tetration keys. And we do that in the Tetration client, or the Tetration uh, interface. So the way to create API keys is click on the, the three gears over here on the upper right hand corner, API keys. And then there's a create API key button. Click on that button, pick some capabilities, at least one of the um, capabilities have to be selected. I'm just gonna go ahead and select all capabilities because I wanna make sure everything works for me. And I'm just gonna call this um, dcloud env API keys and click create. So right away you get this pop-up and the pop-up shows you the API key and the API secret and you have the ability to download it. Now once you've um, created this key and you click that OK button, you can't get the API secret back anymore. So you have to download it if you want to keep the secret. Click on download and it will go to where your browser puts downloads. Now you have to take the key and the secret and place them in the, um, the host vars file for your host. What does that mean? Let's go take a look at it. If we look at the files that came down in the repository, there's a directory called host vars, and in that directory is a file called tetration.yml or tetration.yaml. There's a space in there for the API key and the API secret. So let's get the API key and the API secret. and make sure that you have them in there in between quotes. 
Now my VS Code environment is set, is set up to auto save, so I don't even have to go click save. But now those the API key and the API secret is in there. Now remember, my session is only good for two hours, and at this point, I only had about an hour left. So I'm going to utilize these, and then I'll go ahead and delete my keys. But in any event, I won't have access to this beyond that that time frame. And if you want to go ahead and use the longer running session, you can actually schedule an environment in uh, in DCloud. So I have my API key and I have my API secret. Now we're using the instant on one. And there's a little bit of a change that has to be made in the instant on one to enable Ansible to access that environment in a way that dCloud understands who the request is coming from. Now that sounds a little convoluted, but we have our API key and we have our API secret, which will allow us to do API operations and titration. But because we're using the instant on environment, dCloud has set up a requirement that a cookie with our user ID embedded in it is passed along as well. And so we have to make a change to the tetration Python client file. Now we used pip to install tetpy client and pip installed that under venv, under lib, under site packages, in the tetpy client directory. Now if we look in there, there's only one Python file that has everything in it, and that's called tetpyclient.py. Now if you look in tetpyclient.py, tetpy there's a bunch of um, methods or functions that are that are used for uh, the operation of of the tetpy client. And the one we're interested in, oh, it's very aptly named add custom headers. So if you go into add custom headers, this allows you to put a custom header in for the work that you're doing, depending on what you're interacting with. And it may be, in our case, a cookie. It may be, in some other environment, some sort of auth authentication parameter that lets you get beyond um, some point that your company has secured your environment with. So we're going to go ahead and put this in there. And it's going to go into rec.headers cookie. And you're saying, well, where does that come from? Because you've got the API key and the API secret from Tetration itself, but where does this other information come from? So where it comes from is this. When I interact with Tetration, network information goes back and forth to the Tetration environment and then coming back to my browser. So my browser is actually embedding that, that cookie uh, in the header as it sends the information back and forth. So I'm just going to go back to where we came in to the dashboard. And if I click on my browser, if I right click in my browser, now I'm using Chrome in this one and, and there's a similar function in, in Safari and there's probably a similar function in Firefox. Most browsers, if not all browsers, have this ability to inspect what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and click inspect and again this is in Chrome. And what I'm interested in is the network traffic, the information that's going back and forth between um, the web browser and the Tetration uh, implementation or the, the Tetration installation. So I'm going to go ahead and do something, generate some network traffic. And I'm just going to, going to click on Views. And when I click on that, you'll see there's a bunch of network information or network traffic that popped up on the left hand, on the right hand side here. And if I click on any one of them, just right click on any one of them, you'll see Copy. Uh, there's a Copy menu selection and then a Context menu that comes up with Copy. And what I want to copy is the Request Headers copy the request headers. Now the request headers are going to have that cookie information in it. And I just want to show you if I ran the Tetration client without that cookie, all right, so let's just go ahead and put some quotes there to give it a value, but not the value that we need. And I'm going to go ahead and run my playbook. All right, so I have my environment running. I'm in the directory where my playbooks are. It's Ansible playbook. And the inventory is in the host file. And where's and what's that look like? So just close it up here. And we look at hosts. So host just says Tetration. That's the one host that we're going to connect with. But what does that really mean? When we look in the tetration.yml, it shows us that the host is at this URL. And this is our API key. And this is our API secret. Remember, we filled that in before. And this is 
what we're going to use to authenticate and do API operations. But again, we need that, that cookie environment or that cookie header. But before we put in our file, it's not in there yet. If I say the inventory is hosts, and then the playbook, I have four playbooks here, scenario one, two, three, and five, and I'll explain why we skipped four in just a moment. But we'll do scenario one, and if I hit enter, my playbook starts, but then I get an error. And the error is because I don't have that cookie in my header, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put that cookie in, in, uh, in the header, and this is how we get it. I'm just going to create a new file. I'm gonna call that junk. Just something to hold some text. And I wanna paste in those headers, or that what I copied from uh, the, the browser. And this is what we're interested in. Cookie, dcloud, session ID, etc. And we want this all the way to the end. Not the word cookie, but the dcloud all the way to the end grab that and we'll go back to our TetPy client and here's where our cookie goes and we'll put it between the quotes and now it's in there and again my uh, VS Code Auto saves so this is just going to save and be available for me and now if I go back and run my playbook It goes ahead and does what it was meant to do. Now, what do the playbooks do? Well, that's worth you investigating and taking a look how it would work in your environment. But I said I was going to say why we have scenario one, two, three, and four. And the reason we have those scenarios are the way they're na are the they're named that way because in the D Cloud environment for the Tetration Platform 3.1, in the documentation, there are actually five scenarios. Now scenario four didn't really map to a playbook. Scenarios one, two, three, and five do. So the five scenarios that are in the guide map to, or four of the scenarios of the five in the guide map to the four playbooks that we have in here. So this is great because if you are going to show Tetration to somebody um, or you are going to get an idea how it worked, you could look at the guide and the guide is telling you or the guide is going over what each scenario does and then through the graphical interface or through the web browser interface you can see what that does or how you would go about getting that information graphically displayed to you or if you want to use Ansible to pull it out you can always download the repository do those couple adjustments that I just showed right so you have to install create a virtual environment install the requirements and then depending on the type of environment that you're using, whether it's the dCloud instant on environment or some other environment that you're using that has additional authentication requirements or additional security requirements, you may have to modify the TetPy client. Let's just go ahead and run through the other three scenarios so you see what they look like. Let me clear this out. And we'll run through scenario two. And run through scenario three. and finally run through scenario five. Once again, these map to the scenarios that are explained in the guide that go along with the dCloud environment. So I hope this short video helps you get started with Tetration and Ansible and helps you understand what is available in Code Exchange. And I appreciate you taking the time out to watch. Thanks so much.